Now on Nightside, Spokane Public Schools is considering a year-round schedule. Here are the potential pros and cons for your kids. Well, get ready for a warm, sunny fall weekend, but I am tracking much cooler and wetter weather in your first alert forecast. And the Friday Night Sports Extra returns tonight with all your high school football highlights from around the region. You're watching 4 News Now, Nightside. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'm Derek Dice. Members of the Westboro Baptist Church held multiple protests in the area today, including protesting outside the Be Bold for Jesus conference at the Spokane Convention Center. The Anti-Defamation League calls the church a homophobic and anti-Semitic hate group. The day they protested at East Valley High School. Counter protesters set up across the street from where the church was protesting. According to the church's social media, its protest was centered around a transgender athlete who competes at East Valley. Students at the high school and middle school were let out 90 minutes early today to avoid the protest. The superintendent of East Valley School District told students and parents to avoid the protesters earlier this week. During the general election, voters in Kootenai County will get to decide three of North Idaho College's next board of trustees. The school should also be finding out this month if it will keep its accreditation. During a typical election, a junior college board race doesn't attract much attention. However, with accreditation at stake, this election is different. There are six candidates on the ballot, and none of them are affiliated with, uh, with a party, yet Three are backed by the North Idaho Republicans, and the other three are backed by the Kootenai County Republican Central Committee. When they talk about loss of accreditation, which people hear about, what they're really talking about is the college is on the brink of closing. The KCRCC's chairman told 4 News Now the candidates it's supporting for this election were chosen because they gained the majority vote of its members in a secret ballot vote. Even if the college retains its accreditation, it might face probation showing the importance of this race. For more on the candidates, visit our website, kxly.com. Spokane Public Schools is the latest school district to look into changing its calendar to spread breaks more evenly throughout the school year. But there are already a few local school districts that have made that switch. One of the biggest concerns for many school districts around the state is how long summer break or how a long summer break can negatively affect learning for students. It's referred to as a summer slide or summer learning loss. And research shows students can lose skills and knowledge over a long break. Statistics show every, every time if we already have a kid behind, they just get further and further behind the bigger gap we have without having exposure to education. That's where school districts believe a balanced calendar could help by shortening summer break for students. Schools would still have the required 180 days of instruction, and the state office of the superintendent of public instruction has even given grant money to some districts looking into a balanced calendar. The Pomeroy School District received some of that grant money, but ultimately decided not to move to a balanced calendar. Spokane Public Schools is currently looking at a year-round calendar and a balanced calendar for the 2026-2027 school school year, but it hasn't made any decision yet. The Lost Creek Bridge on Highway 20 just south of Tiger finally reopened tonight. This 30-mile stretch of highway had been closed since Monday, so the Department of Transportation could repair the bridge. But the DOT replaced the deteriorated wood on that 90-year-old bridge and then repaved it. Well, people experiencing homelessness will have access to more resources as the city of Spokane works to move to a new shelter model while tackling the homelessness crisis. The city announced it's launched a, a navigation center at the Cannon Street Homeless Shelter. This center will be able to connect people with immediate shelter, but also mental health care, addiction treatment, and housing placement services. According to the city, the program has served 39 people so far. Well, three Pullman area women headed down to North Carolina to help distribute supplies to those affected by Hurricane Helene. It all started with a Facebook post in which Christy Sabia asked where she could get some five-gallon Cougar logo buckets, and it took off from there. All of a sudden, I'm at my house, and I have 75 WSU buckets there. People from all over the state were sending Sabia buckets, supplies, and money, so she thought the best way to get it to North Carolina would be to deliver it herself. She and two of her friends traveled to North Carolina, packed over 200 of those buckets full of essential supplies, and dropped them off at a distribution site for volunteer pilots to airdrop them to uh, hurricane victims in hard to reach places. Sabia says she's proud of everyone who helped contribute to this trip and all of the people helping on the ground in North Carolina. 
Well, he's back. For those of you unfamiliar with this massive skeleton, he can be found near Southwest Boulevard in the South Hill. He may have started as a spooky Halloween decoration, but at some point he started hanging out year round. And if the scorched earth you see around him looks realistic, well, that's because it is. It was all burned by this fire that sparked during the massive windstorm we had last month. We're guessing that's why he's now wearing a fire hat. And no bones about it, it's been a nice night across the inland northwest, and we're in for a great weekend as well. Chris Crocker tells us exactly what we can expect now in your first alert forecast. Well, here are four things to know about your forecast. We do still have the possibility of some northern lights tonight. Not as strong as last night or Monday, and we do have a few high clouds uh, obscuring the view in spots. It's going to be a warm, sunny weekend with some major changes in our weather pattern coming the middle of next week. Satellite right now is showing those clouds drifting across the region. Nothing coming out of them, but again, may obscure your aurora viewing from time to time this evening. Hour by hour, your forecast for Saturday, those clouds will clear by early Early tomorrow morning, bright sunshine throughout the day with north winds generally less than 10 miles per hour. Will be 72 degrees by 2 o'clock. Our average high is 60, so we are definitely heading to above average temperature, 76 for a high temperature. Around the region, temperatures will be in the 70s just about everywhere, 83 in Lewiston, right around the Spokane area. Temperatures ranging from 72 in Spirit Lake to 78 in downtown and Mead. We are going to see those temperatures drop. As I mentioned, I said a major change, and there it is. We are going from well above average temperatures for the next four days to a tremendous drop. However, those temperatures will actually just be a lot closer to average than what we're going to experience the next four days. And thankfully, that drop in temperatures also comes along with a good chance of precipitation. Right now, it looks like the best chance will be Wednesday. This system looks like it may also come along with windy conditions. Wind gusts right now it looks like in the 35 mile per hour range. Chance of rain Thursday and Friday. We also have some cold nights coming along with that drop in temperatures may get our first freeze officially in Spokane next week. But in the meantime, enjoy that sunny, warm weekend, Derek. Mm -hmm. We will, because that's a big change coming on Wednesday. Well, our dry climate and windy conditions in eastern Washington remind us that the dangers of wildfire season linger beyond the summer months. Today, Washington Commissioner of Public Lands, Hillary Franz, reflected on this year's wildfire season, noting that investments and initiatives were instrumental in keeping 95% of fires under 10 acres. Franz credited an increase in air resources as well as legislation that streamlines local firefighters' response times. She said we should also remain proactive in restoring our forests. Franz reminded people that nature will always be in charge, so we shouldn't fall into a false sense of security after a successful year. We need people, our legislature, to continue to invest in wildfire response and not think that we're out of the woods yet. Commissioner Franz said 90% of the fires we're seeing are caused by humans. She hopes voters will keep the next commissioner of public lands accountable in wildfire safety. The YWCA, or excuse me, Y, yes, YWCA Spokane and YMCA of the Inland Northwest are teaming up to bring new life to one local garden today. The hope is that the food grown in it will go to families in need through the YWCA's Early Childhood Education Program and the YMCA's Hunger Initiatives Program. This garden is used as part of our farm to table program where the food grown goes into our kitchen where we do scratch cooking for over 200 children a day, teens and then kids on the weekend. According to the YWCA, the garden will also serve as a hands-on learning experience about plants, caring for vegetables for young children, and teaching them healthy eating habits. Well, fall is a time where we get to enjoy the crisp air outside and maybe pick some pumpkins to make sure local seniors can join in on the fall festivities as well. One assisted living facility took its residents to Green Bluff today. A day at Walter's Fruit Ranch may sound like a normal outing, but for these ladies from South Hill Village, it's more than that. As they toured the ranch, they couldn't help but express their appreciation. Today was a day to enjoy the pumpkin patch, some good food, and for one woman, even the big slide. It just uh, reminds me of some really happy, happy times. 
as the seniors loaded up to leave the ranch. They said they had a great time and they hope to be back another day. Well, this section of Sprague Avenue in Spokane Valley is closing overnight. During this time, crews will be repaving the road between University and Herald, right by City Hall. A detour will take drivers around the, to Broadway. The road actually closed at 10 o'clock tonight and should reopen by 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Another section of Sprague in Spokane will also be closed tomorrow for Autumn on the Ave. It's hosted by the Sprague Union District in East Central Spokane. Your family can go check out free activities like face painting, a petting zoo, live music, and more. The festival is the perfect way to check out the district's shops and restaurants. Some small businesses are offering discounts and special promotions as well, including Wake Up Call. I think it is just a great event to get people outside. Um, we're getting towards the colder times, um, but it's still really nice outside for a great walk through all of the spots and then obviously to grab a coffee right before you hit all the shops. And the festival is from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. tomorrow. For more details, you can find this story on our website, kxly.com. Well, this new plaque on the Frucci building across the street from the Davenport Grand tells the story of Spokane's old International District, also known as Chinatown. It was torn down to make way for Expo 74. But the woman said, or one woman says the plaque will remind everyone about the contributions made by Chinese Americans here, including helping build the railroads. It gives people recognition, um, at least, you know, the citizens who once lived in Chinatown, because for the most part, they're nameless and faceless and forgotten. That's pretty cool. Well, it's looking like a good weekend to jog a few miles or maybe 26.2 of them. The Spokane Marathon is this Sunday. There are full and half marathon races as well as a 10K. You can also make a relay group with your friends. At the finish line, there will be food, music, and of course, your finisher's shirt. You can still register in person tomorrow at the Lilac Bloomsday Association office. Around the Northwest, Boeing says it plans on laying off 10% of its workforce. The company has more than 170,000 employees worldwide, and the vast majority of those are here in the U.S. This is among the cost-cutting moves taken by new CEO Kelly Ortberg, who took the helm at Boeing in August. He says Boeing needs to refocus resources and not spread itself too thin. The company is also dealing with a strike of 33,000 hourly workers. Talks between the two sides broke down earlier this week. Tools to limit screen time on TikTok apparently serve very little purpose. That's according to mistakenly released unredacted documents regarding the social media giant. In these documents, TikTok executives reportedly discussed potential dangers for teenage users on the video sharing app. The company unveiled time management tools for minors, but a TikTok executive is quoted in the documents saying their goal is not to reduce the time spent on the app. The lawsuit also claims TikTok officials knew the time limit tools reduced daily usage by only a minute and a half, yet they did nothing about it. A consumer alert for parents now. Fisher Price has recalled more than 2 million of these baby swings for a risk of suffocation. The Consumer Product Safety Commission says five babies died in them between 2012 and 2022. In most of those cases, the infants were unrestrained and bedding materials were added to the product. The swing should never be used for sleep and bedding materials should never be added to it. If you have the Fisher Price Snugga swing, you should remove the headrest and body support insert from the seat pad before continuing to use it. Fisher Price is offering a $25 refund to customers who do so. All right, there were a number of great high school football games across the Inland Northwest tonight, including a rivalry game between Lake City and Coeur d'Alene. And our game of the week between Gonzaga Prep and Channel Park, our sports team has us covered. Julian Minnesota, Sydney Berger with us. And guys, how was it out there tonight? Yeah, it's starting to feel like fall. You know, the temperature is getting colder, but that means the football teams, they're kind of heating up a little bit as we get closer and closer to the playoffs. Absolutely. We have some great highlights in all of the top plays coming up next on Friday Night Sports Extra. Stick with us. Download the KXLY Plus app on your connected TV. TV's number one entertainment talk show has everyone talking. Entertaining, hilarious, and so fun to watch. Funniest couple since Lucy and Ricky. Thanks for all the love. Weekdays at 9 on KXLY ABC4. Take a journey through the magical stories of Frozen 2, Aladdin, and more at Disney on Ice Presents Magic in the Stars. Coming to Spokane Arena October 18th through 20th. Tickets on sale now. For show details, visit DisneyOnIce.com today. 
Morgan Freeman, Niecy Nash Betts, and Brad Paisley. New Kimmel, tonight on ABC. What's all this? You said it was a recovery day. I got my yoga mat, foam roller, electrolytes, and protein bars. The whole setup. <laughs> refrigerant recovery, Ben. We're recovering the refrigerant to fix the heat pump. Oh, right. I knew that. Want a protein bar? Get a free heat pump with every furnace purchase at Bill's Heating and AC while supplies last. Call now. Electrolyte? Ben, take the robe off. It's a four-day four-wheel drive sale this week at Cal. Where for four days only, Cal is dropping the prices on four-wheel drives. Plus, giving you an extra $400 for your trade-in. Which is a double $800 reason to upgrade your ride from Cal. Too many politicians are too busy fighting each other. But I just want to get things done to make people's lives better. I'm Maria Cantwell. I led a bipartisan initiative to bring computer chip manufacturing and other supply chains back to America, generating billions in private sector investment to make the chips that run our cars, our appliances, and even our farm equipment, creating jobs, boosting our competitiveness, and lowering costs. It's beginning to work. That's why I approve this message. Conjure up a frightfully good ride this October in the Truck or Treat Giveaway. Win big October 24th with a new Ford F-250 Lariat. Experience the captivating resort expansion and elevate your game at Spokane Tribe Resort and Casino. 4 News Now is brought to you by Wonders of the World. You know what a perfect Friday night sounds like, Sydney? <laughs> Dinner at Wooden City. Maybe some duffel board or darts at Flat Stick. Absolutely. I know you love the darts. Absolutely. And uh, a little Friday night sports extra when I get home. That's that's a perfect Friday night to me. Welcome into Friday Night Sports Extra. I'm Julian Minnesota. That's Sydney Berger. We are both fans of those Hungarian blister peppers, by the way, <laughs> and football. And just like the peppers. These teams brought some heat tonight. I could not have said it better myself. And unsurprisingly, Gonzaga Prep came out hot tonight against Shadel Park, making it an easy choice for anyone who voted for this week's Game of the Week. We need the Bullpups were coming out hot on offense, but the Highlanders weren't hitting the brakes on defense either. G Prep with the ball, Sam Kincaid looking deep to his man Isaiah Dawkin, and it's Incomplete with great coverage by Highlanders defensive back Christian Walters. Again, Kincaid hands it off to running back Noah Holman, but Holman couldn't hold on a fumble and recovery by the Shadle defense. After the ref confirms, it is going back the other way. The first score of the night comes in the second quarter after a scoreless first. It's the Bullpups' Jonah Keller in for six, and this is where G-Prep finally starts rolling. The Bullpups defense wants in on the fun too, and Shadow Park's Caden Hooper is brought down by Gonzaga Preps' Jack Pierce, and he is hyped up. Up next, a familiar matchup, but a different outcome. Again, Kincaid looking to Dawkin, who's covered by Walters. This time, Dawkin hauls it in, sets the Bullpups up, perfect for a rushing touchdown. Final score of our game of the week, Gonzaga Prep wins 28 to nothing. All right, we go to Idaho for the rivalry game between the Lake City Timberwolves and the Coeur d'Alene Vikings. Coeur d'Alene has really dominated this rivalry of late. Opening quarter, they showed why. Vikings leading by three, and they add to it. Christian Young makes it look so easy. Coeur d'Alene extends the lead to 10 to nothing. Now, Vikings with the ball again, only this time Lake City answers with a defensive stop. Jericho Shaver on the tackle. Now, the Timberwolves would have the ball in the red zone here. Fourth down, but CDA's defense comes up huge. With the stop there, turnover on downs. That last check, Coeur was in front 17 to 7. And now we head over to Union Stadium where the Mount Spokane Wildcats took on the Lewis and Clark Tigers. Mead looking to get the first score of the game. It's specialist Hunter McKee with a 48-yarder, and it is good. Now, Tigers quarterback 
David Conklin with the ball fires deep right into the hands of Mason Kershaw, who gets the touchdown there. Wildcats Riker Tweedy looking to pass, finds his wide receiver Braden Ayers. One defender flies past, he dodges a few more, and he's off right into the end zone for a Wildcats touchdown. It was a close game. The Wildcats defeated the Tigers just by one point. Final score, 31-30. to The Central Valley High School, where Northwest Christian was taking on Chihuahua, a Chihuahua going to be driving here in the second half, already down 28 to nothing, and this doesn't make things any better. Picked off by Talon Comfort Wilhite. Sounds like a name of royalty, and he's just a king doing king things. Touchdown for the Crusaders. Now it's Chihuahua's turn to answer, and they respond uh, after the celebration here in a big way. And guess who comes up big? It's the big fella, Wyatt Accord. Big time catch there, and that brings them inside Crusader territory ultimately when it taken down by a multitude of Crusader defenders. But then Joseph Spuler says, hey, enough is enough. The sack and the celebration from the big fella, Northwest Christian, they roll 42 to nothing. And the Pullman Greyhounds took on the Rogers Pirates also over at Union Stadium tonight. The first half, Pullman quarterback Connor Stewart finds his man. He goes right past the defender, and there's no stopping the Greyhounds. That's a Pullman touchdown, and they are going to get the connection there. Pirates quarterback Fritz Ryer looking to make his pass. Can't find anyone. He dodges a pack of Greyhounds, throws to Alex Peabody, and Peabody takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Rogers. The Pirates down only two now with 13 seconds left in the first half. They go for the two-point conversion. Quarterback Jeremiah Sanchez with the ball. He takes it down the middle, pushes his way through, and that is a score to end the half above. Rogers kept the momentum up and beat Pullman tonight, 28-14. to Ooh, A lot of great games, a lot of great performances. But we still have some more to go. You were just at the game of the week this week. You were all over. Right. I went to G Prep and then I headed right over to Cheney for another big game, a matchup between the Blackhawks and Central Valley. That's coming up next on Friday Night Sports Extra. Livestream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. Life's busy. Off is not an option. You need to be on. On time, on the go, on the call, or just ready to play on. Life's waiting. Power on with Batteries Plus. Visit one of over 700 locations today. It's a four-day four-wheel drive sale this week at Cal. Where for four days only, Cal is dropping the prices on four-wheel drives. Plus, giving you an extra $400 for your trade-in. Which is a double $800 reason to upgrade your ride from Cal. I had surgery as a child that I barely remember. But decades later, the insurance company called that a pre-existing condition and denied me long-term care insurance. Washington State created a long-term care benefit to help millions of people like me afford the care we need. But I-2124 will take that benefit away, leaving millions with no way to get or afford long-term care. If it can happen to me, it can happen to anybody. That's why we all have to vote no on I-2124. Sometimes, life is a funny way of turning sideways. Like when your kid decides they're a professional stylist the morning okay, of picture day. Or when your to-do list isn't quite done. You went to Rite Aid, right? Or when you're sure you packed everything you need, but you actually need one more thing. We forgot our prescriptions. <laughs> we? We got you. Are we happy? We are happy. Find everything you need? Yep. Yeah, life never really goes the way you plan, but that's why we're here. It means more at Rite Aid. From the beautiful craftsmanship of cabinets to the stylish looks of granite, quartz, and marble countertops, Northwest Granite has the staff and selection to help you transform your home, office, or cabin into the place of your dreams. Northwest Granite. Batteries Plus has the national scale for all your power needs and a dedicated expert for the local support you want. Power on with Batteries Plus Business. 4 News Now is brought to you by Washington Trust Bank Shred Day. So super jealous, you had the game of the week, uh, but you also <laughs> stopped by another big game tonight. Yeah, I'll take you right out to Cheney where the Blackhawks were hosting the Central Valley Bears. They only have one loss on the season, the Bears, and they're just trying to keep it to that after tonight. Quarterback Tough Ryan hands it off to Bo Butner. It's punched out and recovered by Cheney's Hamza Al-Amin. The Blackhawks get it back, and it's sophomore Connor Collins deep to a very familiar face, that senior Camden Collins, 
brings it in with one hand there. He'll have to tell his little brother thank you for that one <laughs> later tonight. Cheney gets in great field position. Collins is going to take the snap again, but the Bears are able to hold him back. Collins will lose a couple yards on that play there because Wally Palmer was able to get the sack. The final score from tonight, Central Valley wins 34-6. to All right, Ferris at University tonight. Teams running out on the field, ready to go. It's 21 to three at halftime. You high up, but Ferris comes out with the onside kick and Isaac Ott kicks it to himself and the recovery. What a play. Teammates hype. Ferris tries to move down the field, but you high's Logan Cox says, hey, no way. That's not going to happen. Gets the sack and stalls the Ferris drive. Now, later in the fourth quarter, and University is driving. Leighton Hurley rolls out, throws it to Toby Thornburg with the great catch and run. Evidently, He's a freshman, I'm told. He only said it to our camera guy five different times. But that's okay. You got to love it. University wins 30 to 10. All right. Colville travels out to East Valley tonight. Colville lines up for the field goal here. But East Valley's Logan Isle blocks the kick. And big man Miguel Rodriguez Alcantar picks it up and fights for yards. Now East Valley is going to be up next after that huge play right there. They're going to be punting, but Colville Braden Dunham with the block. He grabs it. Look at that, and he is going to get the Colville TD. And then again, Colville is back. Brock Benson rumbles in behind the O-line for the touchdown. Colville is going to win this one, 26 to 16. Oof, yeah, so no shortage of great highlights as we saw oh, there yeah. and great plays. But as always, Sydney, there could only be one. Coming up next, our top plays of the night. Yeah, including one with some brotherly love. Stay with us. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. More Americans choose ABC News, America's number one news source. Do you see? Police! High Potential is your next obsession. Yes! Caitlin Olsen is fantastic. I'm just out here super copping. And Tuesday. You okay? It's my girls. Their father was supposed to drop them off last night. He never showed up. Do you see this? Her girls were holding this in one of the pictures I saw. I know who took the girls. High Potential, new Tuesday on ABC. Watch KXLY Plus over the air on KXLY ABC4. Live updates, breaking news, weather every 10 minutes from the 4 News Now team. Get up to date on the information you need in just an hour. Weekdays at 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. over the air on KXLY ABC4. It's a four-day four-wheel drive sale this week at Cal. Where for four days only, Cal is dropping the prices on four-wheel drives. Plus, giving you an extra $400 for your trade-in. Which is a double $800 reason to upgrade your ride from Cal. Many great careers don't need a four-year degree. They start out here. Bob Ferguson has a detailed plan to expand apprenticeships and on-the-job training like I had to give more Washingtonians the skills they need to succeed. And Bob will eliminate four-year degree requirements for most state jobs, opening doors to more good-paying careers. I would support Bob Ferguson, even if he wasn't my kid brother, but it helps he listens to old machinists like me. Bob Ferguson for Governor. How's your day going? Going good. Thank you again. Well, the time has come for our favorite part of the show, top plays. And I know you've been trying to sneak your way into the top plays. I'm proud of myself tonight, Julian, but uh, you've got number three. Yes, number three. We're going to start with number three, Northwest Christian taking on Chawila. Northwest Christian's Talon Comfort Wilhite is an absolute ball hawk. The pick six as Northwest Christian wins 42 to nothing. Don't know what's better here, the interception of, of course, the celebration with his teammates. Oh, I love it. Top play number two, it's the brother-to-brother -brother connection, Connor to Camden Collins. Little bro throwing it deep to his big brother, who's able to bring it in with one hand. Cheney falls to Central Valley, 34 to six. And East Valley here for the top play. They're punting, but it's Colville who sneaks the top play. Braden Dunham with the block and then grabs it for the Colville TD. Huge play because Colville ended up winning 26 to 16. We'll be right back. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. 
Across our state, we have roads and bridges in desperate need of repair. But Initiative 2117 would make things even worse. Slashing funding for infrastructure, putting all of us at risk. 2117 is a bad deal for Washington. It's a four-day four-wheel drive sale this week at Cal. Where for four days only, Cal is dropping the prices on four-wheel drives. Plus, giving you an extra $400 for your trade-in. Which is a double $800 reason to upgrade your ride from Cal. From the ages of 13 to 15, I experienced childhood sexual abuse, and the abuse ended when I became pregnant. I made the choice to end my pregnancy. In Congress, Dave Reichert voted to ban abortion nationwide. He voted against exceptions. Reichert said as governor, he would work to unravel protection for abortion access here, and I think that is cruel. If Reichert becomes governor, I believe women are in danger. He's wrong for Washington. At Move Fitness, our job is to get you moving using things like high-energy, fun classes, motivating, knowledgeable trainers, and the best variety of workout equipment in the region. And you can get it all for around a dollar a day. Join the movement. I know that it's hard being out on the streets, and I know that it's really, really hard when you're in active addiction. You want to get clean. You want to get sober. You're constantly in survival mode, and it's so hard to ask for help. But your kids need you. You need you. And you can't have your kids unless you get clean and sober and work on yourself. And they will thank you for that. Let people help you. Recovery is possible. For us, protecting the land means everything. It's our homestead and legacy. But Initiative 2117 puts our air and water at risk. And cuts to transportation funding will make it harder to move products. 2117 is a bad deal for Washington. See breaking news in your area or have a story idea? Contact 4 News Now. You know, quick shout out to Braden Dunham there for that top play for Colville. I feel we had to speed round that top plays a little bit. Block punt, not easy to do in high school football. No, that was nuts. He deserves all the credit there. Yeah, shout out Braden there. <laughs> now, uh, we have another big game this weekend, not just in the high school ranks, but college. Of course, oh, yeah. we're talking about that team over in Pullman, the Washington State Cougars. And the last time Washington State played Fresno State, uh, it was a game that Coug fans probably want to forget. You were there. Yeah, and, and you I can, was there. You yeah. can group me in that uh, group that wants <laughs> to forget about it. It was the 2022 LA Bowl, and WC was dominated by the Bulldogs 29-6. to But at that time, the Cougars had a number of key players sit out or enter the transfer portal. So at this time in the season, that will not be the case for tomorrow. Fresno State also looks a lot different. The Bulldogs head coach Jeff Tedford had to step away from the team due to health concerns. Assistant coach Tim Skipper is now the interim. New looks for both teams, but the goal remains the same for the Cougars. I think the biggest thing, you got to make sure you take out their last performance. For whatever reason, they ran into a buzzsaw with UNLV. I think UNLV was fired up about all the press. They came out there, and I guarantee you Fresno is going to be just like we are, coming into that game with a bad taste in your mouth, ready to perform. Both teams coming off the bye week, so it's going to be a hell of a battle. Kickoff is at 4 o'clock tomorrow in Fresno, and the Cougs lead the all-time series 3-2-2. So I have to ask you, of course, every week when we talk about the Cougs, <laughs> Is that three to two going to be four to two after four o'clock tomorrow? Um, no, I don't think so. I think we know Fresno State is aggressive, but I think the Cougs really needed that bye week to kind of find themselves. Sure. Did a whole story about how the defense is reviving themselves this week and over the bye week, and I really do think that we're going to see a different side of Washington State's defense that will really help that Fresno State aggression. Sometimes a little R&R &R is always good. Exactly. A little rest and exactly. relaxation, <laughs> charge the batteries, hang out with the friends on the college campus, do the right. homework. Yeah, that's definitely getting done. Well, Eastern Washington, they play a ranked sack Sacramento State team. That's going to be tough because they're also coming off a of bye week. Idaho, yeah, they have a tough matchup against number three Montana State. So ranked matchups all around. Cougs trying to win and a one more win for the Cougs, then that means they're one more win away from bowl eligibility, which after missing out last year, it would be nice to get. All right, that wraps us up for Friday Night Sports Extra. I'm Julian Minnesota, and that's Sydney Berger. Analysis you can't get anywhere else on the Cougs <laughs> in high school football. We'll see you next week.